Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of What The Hall. I'm well caffeinated and the sun is out. As per the title, you know this is gonna be about Darfan. Start the music. Rather than just getting down to business, I just wanna start by having a little icebreaker. Have you ever seen The Fifth Element? What a great film. The other night I was like wide awake at one in the morning and I couldn't take my eyes off of it. Even if you don't like science fiction, like it's filled with action. All the fashion design is by Gautier. There's a lot of models who were mainstays on the JPG runways during the 90s who have cameos throughout this film. You'll recognize obviously Bruce Willis and Chris Tucker, but then you're like, oh, where do I know that face from? Visually, it's incredible. Definitely one to watch if you have some time. But beyond that, let's talk about Darf. When I record these videos, I'm I'm kind of speaking to you as if I know you. When I was on counter, I get calls and text messages from my friends like, oh, do you want to go for a coffee break? Oh, no, sorry. I'm just walking back to Darf. If you hear me say Darf, I'm talking about Darfan. Now, how did I arrive at Darf? Um, basically, I worked at Sephora. That's where I got all of my footing. That's where I got all of my knowledge. You know, after a while, I, I felt like I hit a wall and I needed to move on to something else. Fortunately, one of my really good friends, you know, who you are, shout out to you, referred me and Darfan felt like a good fit for me just because when I was at Ceph, rather than saying Sephora, I was referred to it as Ceph. So when I was working at Ceph, I used to sell quite often Clarins, Caudalie, and Declior. And so if you're familiar with any one of those three brands, you'll see how Darfan kind of fits into that sort of positioning. Some other contextual things to keep in mind. So this is the early noughties, pre-global recession. Knowing what I know now, Darfan was misplaced. It was positioned as a competitor to a Sicily, a La Mer, a La Prairie. When you do some digging, you realize that in Europe, this brand is more comparable to a Caudalie, a Clarence, a Declior. During my time, you couldn't get a cleanser for less than $80 Canadian before HST. And now you can get moisturizer at Darfan for under $100. The brand started in the 60s. Pierre Darfan, I believe, was a kinesiologist and he came up with a kinesio massage or some sort of technique that they would have used in the cabines. Cabines being the back of the beauty hall or um, the back of the spa where they would have done the treatments. At that time, they were one of those brands that was doing botanicals, doing essential oils, doing natural-based products. But I feel like the brand has kind of lost its way, so I'm going to let you know some of the pros and the cons, but I'm also going to give you alternatives if this brand is no longer available as easily accessible to you. All right, so let me get my notes because that was a long preamble. So I've got seven items that I want to go over. So we're going to start with some of the cleansing items. First, we're going to talk about the micellar water. I've seen the entire life cycle of this. It launched while I was on the counter and it's now discontinued. The bottle that I had probably was one of the last 500 ml bottles I could get a hold of. It's good, it's mild, but what I wanted to bring up with regards to the micellar water. I learned a lot from having an esthetician on my counter, really glamorous lady who I think would have been retired at that stage. You know, in this department store that I was working at, there would be quite a number of women in particular who were um, either close to retirement age or who had already retired. And I suspected a lot of them were just working for fun to pass time. These were the type of women who would have bought head to toe Acris and Isi Miyake. And so for them, they were getting a discount or they would have been selling to their friends, people that they were in community with. And my esthetician, she didn't need to work but she just enjoyed doing facials. We, we used to have good banter, me and her. She was a lovely lady and she taught me a lot. One of the things that she taught me when the micellar water came out, because this was my intro to micellar, even if you don't wear makeup, in the morning, you may not necessarily want to wash. And so having a micellar water on standby can be that sort of refreshing prepping step that you do in the morning. I would do a quick little micellar situation, hop in the shower and then get ready to, to start my day. So that's how I incorporated it. And also if you are are feeling lazy, if you've had a long day and you can't be bothered, it's the perfect way to just kind of clean your skin and you can just go straight to bed. You know, it's not something that you want to rely on every single day of the week, but it is a useful thing to have on standby. If you do like the idea of micellar, be mindful that Darfan is now calling this the intro micellar. The old one was... <sighs> It smelled like grape juice. It was a good time. The two other micellar waters that I'm really fond of, Kojendo, absolutely, it's a good one because it has a tiny bit of lactic acid. And of course, the brand leader in micellar, Bioderma. 
There are three formulations in Canada, and there is a fourth type of micellar water that they sell in other markets. Next is the cleansing gel. So the cleansing gel used to be a part of an entire range of oil control products that have been long since discontinued, and it all smelled really good. I used to love the serum in this collection. The cleanser, it's fine, nothing special. I will say that the last couple of cleansing gels that I had, the Estee Lauder one, was way more thorough, slightly more drying than this one. And prior to that, I was using the Sicily Tropical Resins, which was equally as cleansing as this one. It didn't smell as nice, but something about it was a little bit more milder. It didn't foam up as much, and also it didn't irritate or sting my eyes the same way this one would. I like to have options, I like to switch things up, so I like having a cleansing gel in the shower. And then the last part of cleansing, we're gonna talk about their iconic cleansing milk and toner. This was These were the two things that I used to sell to absolutely everyone, no matter age, skin type, etc. Cleansing milks, cleansing creams, they're kind of an antiquated approach to washing, but one could argue it's also a way to minimize water usage. The best way to use a cleansing milk is you pump loads of product. I would use about four to five pumps of this at a time. And you just kind of massage it onto dry skin. Absolutely, you can rinse them off. That's perfectly fine. On the back of the carton, you'll see it recommends one tissues off so you'd get a box of Kleenex and literally just swipe off the product. Now that's very wasteful. Again, an antiquated approach to washing one's face. I will definitely recommend getting reusable cotton pads for this purpose. When you use a cotton pad, right, versus using tissues, Tissue. Do the one side to kind of take off the initial layer of the milk and then when you turn it over you can see is there any residue left behind and usually with two passes you know you can see perfectly clean skin. Milky cleansers always have a toner that's meant to use in tandem. It's very much the French thing to do. Again, all the brands. When you look at Clarence, for every milk, there's a matching toner. So I used to use what's called Genshan with the iris toner. At Sicily, they do their Liselay, and then they sell you that floral water in the pink bottle. The toner that complements the milk is designed in such a way that it catches any of the last bits of residue and leaves you feeling super clean and fresh, and then you're able to layer your treatment products on top. It's kind of difficult to wrap your head around until you try it. It's a very gentle yet effective way to clean your skin without having to turn on the tap. Now we're gonna move on to some of the treatments. In terms of oils and balms, I love a good essential oil-based product. They condition your skin. If your T-zone is too shiny, if your cheeks are a bit dry, you find the right type and you'll notice that your skin should start to balance out. Pores less dilated, etc. That's the thinking. Now at Darfan, again, my time we had, I think we were up to eight at one stage and now it's looking like there's maybe four or five on the Canadian marketplace. The one that I've used recently is the Eight Flower. Eight Flower is a combination of eight different flowers, neroli, patchouli, rose, jasmine, all sorts. It's got vitamins A, C, E, and it's supposed to be anti-aging and moisturizing. So it's supposed to do all the things. You can use it a couple of ways. When we were on counter, we would prescribe that people do their cleansing, their serum, and then their oil and moisturizer on top. Or they could use the serum in the morning and the oil at night. Now, if all of that sounds a bit too time consuming, I have this really basic moisturizer that I got in a G with Peep. I found it to be quite matte. And so what I did was I put a couple of drops of this eight flower oil in it, and it definitely made it more slippery and it had a much nicer finish to it. The, the moisturizer didn't separate, it didn't pill, it absorbed into the facial hair. So you gotta do a little trial and error and see how you wanna use these oils. You can use them as standalone moisture Moisturizers, you play around and see what works for you. And another part of this conversation that I don't know is happening. With essential oils, you have to be drawn to the scent. It's not enough that the, the formulation is for your skin type. You have to actually derive some sort of pleasure from it. If you buy into that idea of aromatherapy, then you have to desire the product. You have to smell it and feel like, ooh, this is good, I wanna use this. There's no eye drop or pump, so you're meant to turn it over and put it onto each finger and then press it into your skin. If you do like the idea of a essential oil-based products. Again, Clarence. Clarence has three or four different oily products. Their Blue Orchid is their hero product. I'm fond of the Centaur. Fortunately, that's the one for dry skin, and I love it. I find the smell to be very addictive. I'm drawn to it. It's that perfect marriage in this case. I used to use the Caudalie Vinergetic Oil. It comes in the green bottle. Wicked product. Very thin texture, easy to absorb, smells great, feels great. Declior is another one of these brands, but 
once they got taken over by L'Oreal, it's a whole different brand. I don't recognize anything about it today, so I don't know what I could recommend from them, but it's another one you may want to look at. And then this is the last thing in the oil category. They have this one novelty product that they've been selling for ages, and this is called the Aromatic Purifying Bomb. One of the star ingredients in this product used to be tea tree. It's no longer mentioned in the copy so much, but it still has the same sort of function. They now position this as a overnight mask, which you know speaks to where we are in terms of skincare conversations online. This is something that you use two or three times a week as needed. It's moisturizing, but it's also rebalancing. So if you are that person who has congestion, redness, pimples, this might be something to look at. It has a, a, like a waxy texture. So what you do is you take the size of a green pea, you warm it up in your palms. You're meant to smell it first, you know, have that aromatherapy experience and then press it onto your skin. It's a standalone product that you're using without any moisturizer or any serum to complement. You just wash and put this on a couple nights a week and it's supposed to be a cure, a deep treatment to kind of rebalance the skin. The only comparable product that comes to mind, and I'm just gleaning this from what I've seen online, at Ipara, which is a black owned brand, it's available at Holtz and The Bay. And I think in Europe, Selfridge and possibly Harrods might stock it. Their overnight balm, it's supposed to be a brightening product that helps to unify your skin tone. And it is that balm texture. So what I'm seeing in the visuals of it, it looks like it's that same sort of texture where it's firm and it melts in your palms and you can press it onto your skin. So definitely one to look at if this idea speaks to you. Somebody might ask, Darfan has capsules that are vitamin A, vitamin C, all sorts now. They are trying to keep with the trends to some extent. Another oil that I love and that I really want to recommend is Verso. You might have seen my retinol video where I was talking about retinol oil specifically. Verso has a dry oil that you use day and night, but this is a new product and it's called the Super Elixir. I've had a couple of foils of this and I love it. This one is really emollient, so it's not a fragrant product. It doesn't have that same sort of aromatherapy idea to it, but this one has B3 and retinol. So I really rate this one in place of the Darfat. And then the last thing that I'm going to speak to is the Hero product. I think this is the thing that's keeping this brand alive. And that is the intro serum. I don't know where I put it. They've upgraded it several times. The formulation keeps changing. But one thing that doesn't change is the color and the smell. It's a very thin, fluid serum. It comes in like five different sizes now. But you just splash it on because it is so watery. Your skin just feels really comfortable. It's designed that for the people who have, you know, cuperose, rosacea, really flush skin. It's supposed to calm it down. So in the current iteration it has hyaluronic, resveratrol, BHA, peony, hawthorn, chamomile, and interestingly, they've added watermelon to it. I wonder where they got the idea to use watermelon in their products. It's just a great foolproof product. It's no different to Night Repair, Genifique. It's almost like the one size fits all serum in Darfan. And they're calling it Inner Youth because I think they don't want it to be just the anti-redness serum. They want this for all people. They have the hyaluronic serum, the Hydra Skin. I always thought that was boring. Stimmel Skin is fine, but it's. It, I remember it being quite shimmery. When I was at the counter, I was a Aravita C. That was my collection of products at Creme Energique. The old Stimmel skin where it was like a transparent jar. Predermine. Oh, there were so many heavy hitters. You know, the brand is completely transformed. Now, in terms of serums, that's going to be the next video. I have a few serums that I want to share with you because I'm sure that whatever serum you're using right now is boring. And I've got some suggestions for you. If you happen to be traveling this year and you find yourself on the European continent, Darfan is one of these parapharmacy brands. So you can find value sizes, uh, special packages and all sorts in the pharmacies discounted versus what it sells for in North America. You know, if you are faithful to this brand, I wouldn't be faithful to it for so long. I'm in two minds about it, right? So a lot of brands in the Lauder portfolio have come and gone, but this one keeps going. The brand is almost as old as Lauder itself. In around 2010, that era, they were buying up a lot of brands like Rodden, Glam Glow, Smashbox, Too Faced, Becca. And we've seen Becca get shuttered. We've seen Rodden get shuttered. Smashbox has narrowed the number of markets where their products are sold. Last year, there was a number of layoffs in the offices in the US for um, Smashbox and Too Faced. Too Faced is an interesting case study in that when Lauder bought it a few years ago, they paid a billion dollars for it. I'm not seeing it on TikTok and stuff the same way I would have seen it on Instagram during Instagram's heyday. Some brands people grow with, but some brands are very much for a, a very short window of time. Like the, the packaging and the presentation of certain brands like a Too Faced, it feels almost infantilizing. Whereas in East Asia, for example, you have brands like Paul and Joe and Jill Stewart. And I think the same 
same can be said for a glam glow. You know, it felt like it hit the zeitgeist at that right time, and now it's kind of waning. And this is completely different because we're talking about skincare. You know, a brand like Glam Glow was very specific to somebody under 30. As that person would have grown up, they, they may not have identified with that brand the same way. They would want to graduate to something a little bit more mature. The customers that I was dealing with were predominantly Gen X and boomers. The counter that I worked at, at one stage, we were one of the top performing counters in North America, right? So that includes Bergdorf, Saks, all the big department stores. We were one of the top performers. It kind of went off a cliff. And now you can no longer get it at Sephora. You can no longer get it at Holtz. It's only available through DTC and shoppers. And I feel like in America, it's at Blue Marine or Blue Mercury. I'm watching it with fascination. Keep your eyes open to other possibilities. And I hope that this was useful to you. So if you use this brand, I'd like to know what things you use from them. I'm curious. Thumbs up, thumbs down, however this video moved you. Thank you for listening. Thank me for speaking. I will catch you in the next one. Adios.